Welcome back. Our next guest has really brought DEI into a new, a new realm with a history and technology and a genuine passion for people. Trina Limpert has created an organization called Rise Next, and it literally focuses on making the world more inclusive. Trina, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's great it's to be here. It's our pleasure. And of course, as we're very busy talking about what we can do and what is going on in the world around the initiatives or even the topic of diversity, equity, inclusion, mm -hmm. you've expanded that concept. And I'd love to hear, and I know our viewers would too, a little bit about how you got here and now what are you doing? Yeah, I would love to share. I get asked that a lot. How did I end up working in diversity, equity, and inclusion? And uh, it's probably going on 15 years I've actually been working in this space. So I've been in the tech industry most of my career. I would say all of my career. I still am uh, very heavily involved in the tech industry. And as I moved into the industry and had all these ambitious goals of my career and what I wanted to do and learning technology and just loving the space, becoming a minority woman within the tech industry was something I was not ready for. And the challenges that were I, I found in uh, working my way through my career and some of those things started to create more awareness of the need for diversity, equity, and inclusion within our workplaces. And so gotten very involved early on in my career in steering committees and memberships for what they call employee resource groups within corporations. And so started out my careers span companies like a long time ago, Novell, if anybody knows what that is, but uh, Oracle, I think that's a pretty well-known uh, company and eBay. And uh, within those environments was able to participate in those, those programs they were offering to help with women in leadership and in the tech uh, seen really creating awareness within the management teams on how to better lead diverse workforces. And so I got very highly involved in addition to my corporate career uh, in these steering communities and then started getting more involved in community programs and social programs. And eventually that led to me overseeing uh, eBay's largest employee resource group, uh, their women in technology organization and was overseeing 1,500 members in 17 countries and leading these global initiatives. And a lot of the challenges I was seeing, both within you know, as being a tech executive as well as leading out these ERGs, was seeing the need for more awareness and then an understanding of how to really drive to action. Because we can do a lot of education, we can do a lot of training, but I was still seeing there was this barrier for companies to understand, well, how do we, we can do training on implicit and unconscious bias and all of these other things, but how do I really get involved? How do I really create change? And so that led me to starting to consult other companies and eventually started my own consulting firm to rise up the next level of diverse and equitable and inclusive workforces. So that's kind of the journey that brought me here. And it's an amazing journey. And we don't, I think a lot of people think that equity and inclusion, diversity, we've been talking about these things for so long and they must have been progressing. We must have made progress over the years. You talk about being in this world for 15 years. There are people we're talking about on this show who have been in it for 60 years. It's not that it's a new topic, mm -hmm. but no. you've expanded it to really be more inclusive, but why are we still just talking about it? Yeah, I think that's the challenge that we're trying to overcome is, is provide actionable change. And there's, there's a couple of things that um, in the research and the work that I've done, even firsthand, so McKinsey reported that $8 billion a year is spent on diversity, equity, and inclusion training and, and initiatives yet there's no research to show that it's actually driving change. So to your point, we have been at this for a long time. It is not new. There's a lot of passionate people that have been doing a lot of work. The challenge is how do we bring everyone along with us so that it's not just those that have 
uh, are identifying as a minority uh, doing the work. It should be everyone. Everyone should understand the opportunity that's available if they start becoming aware and intentional about creating the own, their own change. And so one of the things that I'm very focused on is really creating new experiences where everybody sees the opportunity and wants to get involved, that it's not someone else, right? It's me. Uh, I, I like to say we don't hire a diversity, equity, and inclusion officer. Everyone is a DEI officer, and everyone should act as a DEI officer. They should go to a meeting or within their teams and look around and go, do we have anyone that is, uh, you know, identifies racially or ethnic, ethnically different? Do we have those that might have disabilities? And do we have accessibility for those that might not be there? How do we create, how do I hire for it? How do I retain uh, is a big thing, not just hire, but retain um, and create these environments where people want to be and want to belong and feel like they belong there. And what is, what is the benefit? What is the true benefit of being inclusive, of being diverse, of being aware of all of these other communities within the corporations, especially which are their own communities. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, that it's not just a nice to have. So if we're gonna be speaking within a corporate environment, growth and profitability come top, right? And so there's research that organizations that are more inclusive and have broader diversity are 15 to 35% more profitable. And the reason for that is because it drives creativity and innovation. And if you're trying to match your corporate marketplace, you want to have your employee base match that because they're going to have the ideas on how we access and change and alter our products, how we can become, you know, access markets that we may not have before. There's a reason why it drives growth and profitability. And uh, a few years ago, I had gone back to Harvard and was studying strategy. I, I've always been a big believer in education and, and was expanding my own and uh, was sitting in these classes. And at the same time, I was the, the global president of women in IT. And, and it just struck me that why are we not applying the same business principles to diversity, equity, and inclusion that we do in any other business strategy? And the, the, it's not something that should be done on the side. Our diversity, equity, and inclusion goals should be integrated to every strategy that we have. And uh, really looking at how do we tie that and apply those same structure and principles we would any other business. Really, DEI should not be uh, a separate thing. It is not going away. We've seen, we've said, we've been doing this for 15 years. It's part of what we're doing. It's going to be there. It's time to start integrating it into how we look at how our company grows and becomes more profitable. I couldn't agree more. And thank you for explaining it so clearly. Trina, how can people find you? Where can they hear more from you if they want more information or if they actually want to take action and become a change leader themselves? Yeah, you can reach out to us. Our website is risenext.com. That's R I Z E next.com and uh, happy to connect with anyone, provide information. And we've seen a lot of opportunity in training as well as the tying into the strategies there. So very excited to work with anyone that's interested in, in moving this work forward. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I know our viewers are going to look for more information. So stay tuned for them. Thanks Great. for being Thank with you. us. And we'll be right back.